Alrighty, we're at Jimbo's place. We're out to see his new car, um, and you're going to see it with us. Jeez, you got the place mowed up nice. Jeez, Jimbo, you got the yard looking nice, man. <laughs> he said he mowed. <laughs> Come get a mic on. Jolene, the mic you up so everybody can hear what you're saying. I, I for. Oh, I'll say here in a second. I enjoy mowing, but I don't like mowing flowers and uh, bees. You don't know what like I mean? flowers Fla and bees? No, I don't like mowing flowers and bees. Right on. Oh, looks like a little um, puppet or little robot. That's your robot for, the, for, the, for now. Mm. That's your robot. Oh, Working out mm. all right? What was I going to say now? Um, mm. uh, what was I going to say? Mm. I'm, I'm going to have a... a we're going to chop a car on the 8th and 9th of October. Or no, not chop a car, we're just doing a custom car thing. Are, are you willing to be the... Oh, you mean it publicly, like people watching? No, people are coming, 10 people. And okay. we, and we, he, you're, do you mind if you're the special guest? Um, <laughs> I threw it out there anyways. Well, that, that, um, Would you show up? Yeah, All yeah, right. Uh, we can do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> For what it's worth. For what it's worth. Well, I mean, <laughs> we'll feed I, you I, pizza and stuff like yeah, that, and you'll I, get to I, meet some people. Yeah. yeah, the lawn looks nice, man. Get her mowed up yeah. good, man. Looks good. So you playing with your car? Um, well, no. No. Um, I polished those things again. Okay. They turned out pretty good. Wow. Uh, they were pretty beat off. You're a polishing maniac. No, aren't not you? anymore. Uh, you giving it up? It, yeah, no, I used it all up. I, that one, this one here, had a dent here and a yeah. dent here, halfway through to the center. Yeah, and what and you I, do? I beat it all out with um, punches and stuff. Okay. But anyway, it, um, mm. I've got another present for you at home then. Oh. I've got some more polishing stuff. Okay. I do. I, well, when next time you come, I, you remind me, and I got some more polishing. Yeah, I had to there. auto solve it. I should have sanded it finer. I only went as far as 600, and I should have gone like 1500 or 2000, but uh, I had to polish like with auto solve oh, so, three or four times before it came out. There were some light. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It's really weird why people put you wrenches tell, on them. Like you can tell people have used like a pipe wrench to put these on and take them off. Well, you can turn them all on, all the way. By hand? By hand and snug them and that's it. Well, you, you know don't what? even need a wrench. You know what? That right there makes it like you want to put a wrench on. I know, and people do, and you don't have to. They, they don't go on there. Uh -huh. They don't go on or come off that hard. Well, let's see this bad boy. I want to see it. Yeah. I want to see it. Um, oh, it's back here. Um, wasn't counting on you showing up so fast. I was going to build some kind of apparatus to pick this thousand pound bag up and put it up on the table. Well, I can do that for you. It weighs more than both of us put together. Well. So I hooked up the come alongs, but I was just looking. No, it don't weigh more than both of us put together. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, and it was, it's got a hole in the top. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, someone told me, get it off the floor. And you listened to him, did you? Um, you took their advice? Well, yeah, it's off the floor. Also, <laughs> also, I, I can, um, I'm going to talk to Harold, and I'll see if he can, we got some sand we're digging up around the shop there. I might be able to oh. bring you some sand. Oh, oh, I need about a yard. I'll, I'll see what can happen. See if I can bring that to you. Because I'll get in this, I'll get a, I'll see if I can uh, bring that to you. A yard is roughly... Two half ton truckloads. Okay. Because a yard of sand weighs, I think, 1,500 pounds. Okay. And. Well, I'll, like uh, I said, I'll talk to Harold. A half ton. A ton is 2,500 pounds. Yeah. And a, a yard of sand weighs a ton and a half. So a ton and a half. You want enough sand to put in that thing there is what um, you want? Yeah. And. An inch or two of cement on I'm this. Not, floor. I'm not bringing you the cement. No, I, I got. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to get more cement. But um, can I just go look um, at this car? If you put a yard of sand in a half-ton truck, yeah, with normal suspension, it's bottomed out, and all four tires are flat. Yeah, and the front wheels are in the air. Okay. Like um, it destroys a yard of sand will destroy a truck. So. You have to have a pretty heavy-duty truck to handle we'll one get, yard. Maybe we'll get a U-Haul trailer. 
Yeah, like half, half a off, yard right. on a truck is maxed right out. It's uh, like all you can carry because the stuff's heavy. I'll just get a U-Haul trailer yep. and we'll put a maybe here we'll put a bucket load on for me, <clears> and I'll bring it out to you. I know you've I know you've been wanting some sand. Yeah, I I've been putting it off. I did go to one gravel pit that I was recommended to go, and it, that didn't work. There was no trespassing signs everywhere, and there was a truck parked there at a building with no doors. All the doors were boarded up, so that was the office. But anyway, the truck the truck that was sitting there was just one of the drivers that drives one of the big trucks. That is so cool. Anyway, I've been taking a, some of this. Uh, miscellaneous stuff off figuring out what i have and what i don't have and um anyway so cool. we'll come back and take a look at the transmission i guess it's a four speed i think i don't know i'm just guessing i think this is reverse does that make sense listen you could tell me anything on this because and, you know, there's only four slots here for this yeah. and it's a four speed so that must be reverse that must be reverse but anyway um that's the transmission. That is so cool. And there's a little bit of rust on top of the frame over here, but actually the frame, you know, there's spots that's a little bit bad, but it's good on the underneath side. It rusted on the top. Well, that's where the wood's setting in. You oh, know, they, yeah, and it, it's constantly, constantly wet. Yeah. 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 That is anyway, so um, cool. Stay there for a minute. Okay. Gee, you almost this tripped, is, buddy. There's the brakes. Look at that now. Would That's you come look at this, baby? Come look at this. <laughs> yeah. You gotta look at this now. You think you you think you had bad brakes? Look. Well, there's the brakes. That, well. That's right. It's a little bit of play because it goes right down, hits the clutch. But anyway, that. Look at that now, would you? That's, that's the brakes. And the clutch. Uh, this, I'm not sure. I got a uh, study I, I, I quite a bit your, here for this. The bar there holds the rear end. It kind of rusty there, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, it's bent too. Yeah, it's kind of run. Just yeah. kind of rusty, eh? Yeah. But anyway, not, the steering not. wheel, it's all kind of, um, oh, I don't know what kind of um, joint that is, but a zigzaggy joint, um, somebody would know, dovetail or something. But anyway, the steering wheel is missing, no pieces. It just needs to be all glued back together. Cool. Like it all, it's actually in good shape. It just needs to be glued back together. It's all, all the glue dried out. But every single piece is there, and it's all the same. It's in good shape. It's this, just, must, this must be like Model T, is it, for yeah, advanced that, and retail? Um, one would be advanced, actually I'm not sure, but one is uh, the timing and I think the other is the rev. Jimbo, this is cool. I've never seen but, this a long time ago. Look at the back springs in it. Yeah. There's some springs for your car, Jolene, look at that. You think you've seen springs before, look at that. These got perches right there. Look at, crazy. But anyway, there's the tailpiece originally. That's the tailpiece that the fenders go in. Yeah. And um, of course, that opens up <laughs> there. That's the there tailpiece. You, okay, there you right? go. Right? That the back seat or whatever goes up against the roof. And that's the windshield part. And the two fenders are pretty good, at, and some doors, and that's the piece in between the doors. Um, that's fairly rough shape along the bottom, but most of it on top is the piece. I don't even know if I. But this is, that's, that would be original if you go yeah. this way with the roof. Ah. The only thing is, that's a serious amount of effort. Isn't it? But I just start so fresh. Unique. I just it's start. So, you know, the only difference is it's so unique to have, like, that convertible type top because they only ran the Scott cars back in the teens. Make, make, a, make a race car out of it. Yeah. Well, that'd be easier. Well, imagine and make a race car <laughs> out of it. Like, do your own thing. Like, the whole thing. Like, do your or own even thing. even if I made it into a truck, it would be yeah. easier. Yeah. But anyway, I put tape on this so nobody falls. Well, I tripped on it, but yeah, well, yeah, it's, I put. But anyway, it, yeah, she needs a little, to, needs a little a love on the top tires. rail, huh? She needs a little love on the top rail, doesn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> That's cool. And these little things are uh, decompressors. So it turns over easier? Yeah, so um, you turn it like this, and it opens up a little hole, and you pour gas in it, and then you put the crank and make sure your ignition's on and your spark's in the right spot. But One, uh, two, three, six. four. Oh, she's six-cylinder. And anyway, uh, then you, of course, crank it over, get it going, and then turn these back up, and they close the hole. But it's decompressors. But this is all one-piece block, no head. And these come out. That's the valve train. 
Like you take that whole, that nut out. So the valves are right there, exposed. Oh yeah, the covers are in the box. Wow. No, the, there's covers. The okay. covers are in a box um, okay. upstairs. Take a look. Yeah. But when you take these bolts out, it takes out the valve and the seat. Everything comes out with it to do like a, bro a valve job on it. What you can't get so out So this down comes here. out. This comes out and okay. all the valve train is in that. And it, the valve and all comes right out spring. The whole thing comes right out on the bench where you do your work and then put it back in. And, but the cylinders are bored up in that cast of metal. There's no cylinder head. Yeah. Now, and you think uh, 1918, they put a cylinder head on it, and that's that motor I have over there. Okay. Uh, it's the same motor, except for it's a newer style, and it, it has a cylinder head. That is yours a six cylinder you have over there? Yeah, same thing. And it's, it's hard to believe Jimbo would have a six cylinder student hooked maker hooked onto a chain that cranks over the motor. The starter has a chain on it. Like, there's the starter. I want to come over and take a look. I think it's the starter. <clears throat> I think it's the starter, he says. A little distributor cap. Actually, maybe somebody told me wrong. Maybe it's the generator is has the chain, take a look and the starter here. is a direct gear that turns on, like uh, in the rear end, that turns. Because I think this, this that's the generator, right? See down there, see the chain. Truthfully, I don't know if this is the generator, or that's the generator, or that's the starter, and that's the starter. But that looks like one that. or the other, but anyway, there, one is hooked up to the chain, the other has a gear that turns it. But, um, oh no, by the time I'm done, but it's kind of a cool fan. It almost looks like something, like a little miniature Ferris wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, but anyway, um, <clears throat> Missing the back of the seat. This, I believe this is the bottom, and I'm missing the back. You only need one seat anyways, Jimbo. That one right there, buddy. Yeah, well, I got that one too. That is hooked up somehow where it'll swivel around. So the passenger can turn in the seat and talk to the people in the back seat. All right. Remember at the Lars Anderson Museum, the, they had a, one of them cars had a, a potty in the, in the car, so you could take a, a whiz while you were, you know what I mean? Like, Okay, that's bizarre. It's it's almost like um, the trailer park boys have piss mm -hmm. jugs. They had a little potty in their car, right? You know what? Well, at, on when when you did one of your jamboree car show things, yeah. you did a roof on a car with people listening to the music, walking around, and and watching you cut the roof off. Yeah. Anywhere from two to six hundred people were there. Yeah. Watching at any given time. We're gonna we're gonna do that um, eighth and ninth of October, we're gonna, and you're gonna be the special guest. Oh, <laughs> I'll yeah. put the pressure on you. Well, there's probably lots that would disagree with you, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I can show up regardless. And Jimbo sold yeah. his truck. Yeah, he, yeah. His, mm -hmm. his Chevy went to a new home. Cool. He's freeing up stuff, buying stuff. He's just a. Oh uh, well, this didn't. This I couldn't turn it down because the tires are worth more than that. You know what? No, it's, it's worth that just to look at it. Like a thousand dollars. And yeah. I guess uh, he said the pre the guy that he bought it from, um, the Halifax Studebaker people, they had it running a few years back, just like five, ten years ago. So and it turns over. So uh, it should run. Like like if the motor has to come apart and be rebabbed and stuff. Well, well, this car, it's um like how many gener. This is like. Five generations of man. 19 what? 1917. 1917. So like four or five generations of man, and it needs two or so generations of man to finish it. You know, like if you restored it. So No, Jim, but don't restore it. Don't waste your time on that. Make it into a yeah. race car. Make, make it look <laughs> yeah. the way you want it to look. I, I think, anyways, because you can make all the fenders and, you know, the fenders. Uh, actually, the like fenders that. are good. It's just the panels of the body. Yeah, but they're not race car fenders. <laughs> oh, I like the fenders, though. I, I could make it actually a race car, sort of speak, and you leave these fenders. Oh, yeah, no doubt in my mind. Um, okay, um, up here I got a couple, uh, a couple things I need a hand with. I'm uh, going to turn on the hot, my water pump here in a few minutes, then hook, bring up my pressure washer yeah. and pressure wash the shop out. 
Um, I'm gonna pressure wash so I can pour cement here soon. And, but anyway, I need this motor up there. I can't pick that up. <laughs> um, no, we don't have to pick it up. We, it can stay on the ground. We just need to coax it up over that bump. Just a second, I'll help you. What's that, what's that, what's that thing you got that on now? This is a lift. Jesus. Just a second now. Okay, go drag the back end around if you can. Oh. All right on, that's cool. Just a second. And this is your engine for your Studebaker truck? Uh, yeah. I, um, I'm replacing the, the guides because the guy, he neuroed the guides. And I've since then learned that neuro guides aren't really that good. You should replace them with new guides, especially where I have all brand new valves. Yeah. And everything else is new, so. This is the engine you caught on fire I that day? Yes. So I bought a box of guides, brand new, and they're machined. So anyway, oh good, no rust. What you cover? Just oil? Yep, oil. Motor oil. Grease won't do it? Well, packing grease does it, but not wheel bearing packing grease. Okay. It has to be, it can't be waterproof. It has to breathe the, because there's enough moisture in the metal to rust. So if you cover it with waterproof grease, the moisture can't evaporate out of the metal and then it'll rust underneath the grease. You've got to have, packing grease is not waterproof. It lets it breathe. So there's no condensation inside. Gotcha. But anyway, that's, that is controversial. Some people would disagree. Same as uh, God's message. That looks like the exact same thing. God or not, that's contra that can be classed as controversial. That looks like the exact same engine. Same engine. That's my test for putting guides in and taking them out. They come out halfway as good, just a punch and, you know, like bang, 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 and they're right out. So okay. I shouldn't have too much trouble putting them in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my guides in and then take a valve, put a little rubbing or valve guiding compound on it eh. and put it in the hole and just rub it a kind of a little bit and then look at it with the light and see how square the lines are. Whether, like in the seat, because see with the new guide, it means the guide's not, the, the seat is not made for the guide if the guide's been replaced. And I gotta make sure that the lines, the scratch lines in the seat go all the way around. And they might just hit halfway and miss because gotcha. there will be a couple thou off because guides as they wear wear a little bit crooked and he knurled it and redid it so it's off a little bit and that me and then the seats were done so when I put new guides that squares it back up and the seats may or may not be true gotcha. but uh, regardless I can put the guides in and I may have to take the the block to a machine shop and have the seats done you want more of this uh, more the, yes, um, the coarse, yeah. the coarse stuff. But anyway, here's my recent dilemma on the old car. Um, this holds the headlight on. The headlight goes there with a big nut on the back. And this is for one side and the other side's missing. I gotta build that. That looks the same. I need, I need another one of these. Piece of pass. You can do it. Um, I should be able to, but sure it, it's kind of, um, I just need a chunk of metal that thick and I trace it out and I cut it and bend it and keep hammering. I, and I'd make it out of three pieces. Yeah. Or four. Def, make this piece, make this piece, and then make that piece. Yeah. After. Yeah, definitely. But anyway, this is, I only have one. You got the headlights for that? Yes. The headlights okay. are good, but this is what bolts them on. Okay. And I'm missing this bracket. Now... You can These, this thing is a pilot bearing out of the Oldsmobile. Yeah. And you can see somebody's been at it. They totally destroyed it. And in my original motor, it was perfect. And a friend of mine... That's only it. for a standard, isn't it? No, no. This lines up the transmission in the, in the flywheel. 
Okay. Uh, this came out of the Oldsmobile, uh, standard or automatic. Okay. Maybe some motors don't have it, but this has on the front of the transmission, it has a point that has to go in. This is what makes the Oldsmobile transmission go on the motor so Jesus hard. Because the- Gotta be lined up perfect. The uh, torque converter drops. Okay. Just that little bit. So when you're trying to get the transmission on the back of the motor, it won't go on. Well, that's probably and from someone- And of course, it's in the car and you're laying upside down underneath it. Probably so, from someone having a hard time. Well, no, they took this out for some reason, but anyway, they wrecked it. Well, I just want to tell you a story on how to get this out of the car. Put some bread. Because in. they used a polar and wrecked it. Yeah. That, that's not how you take these out. Andy Rob was here and he said, oh, um, first of all, we used grease. Grease did not work. So I, I was eating a muffin from in the house and, oh, that'll work, he goes. So I gave him half the muffin and he jammed in the muffin in there. Yeah. Uh, literally jammed with a, screw, with a little round, round punch, jammed um, half my muffin. <laughs> That's so stupid. Uh, was it anyway, buttered? Uh, was it buttered? Um, no, uh, <laughs> it was like a blueberry or chocolate, <laughs> chocolate muffin, chocolate chip muff muffin. Anyway, he shoved, pounded this muffin in that hole yeah. with this, and I already had like a bolt, like a bolt, like a, well, like this cut off that just fit in there. Yeah. And then a three or five pound hammer. And once he jammed in enough of that muffin, and stuff with a little bit of grease and then he put that bolt in here that just fit and then hit with hammer the that muffin and grease had to go someplace and it pushed this bushing out without even putting a mark on it perfect and that's kind of how you get these bushings out i heard tell it bread yeah bread uh, muffin yeah, and yeah. just because see grease chocolate chip uh, unless the bolt really fits tight the grease squirts right squirts right out then the bolt goes right in did your mother make the muffins uh no it was a button one oh, it was a button. but anyway um that's how you get those things out awesome yeah, muffin a whole bunch of it and you might have to do it a couple times but mm. within three times out comes the bearing wow pushing so you've got one in that now a uh, new one a new one well the one out of that motor that did not have a mark it was perfect so okay. i just took it out of that motor and put it in this motor so the Ferrari's covered up. You're not paying attention to the paint right now. Um, I want to get my cement done. Why? Like I, I yep. want to get the cement done so I can put that car in here. Yeah. And then I'm going to sand it down and do what I can with the paint. And I'm also going to jack it up and take the bow housing off and check out the clutch and take the wheel assembly apart and put new wheel bearings in it. And while I'm at, at it, I'm going to keep going and take everything off the side of the motor and then build jigs to hold the cams and replace the timing belts. Jesus. So that'll be a little while. And then sounds like a sounds like an all winter thing. It kind of. Because words just to take it apart and back together and do nothing is uh, six weeks. So it, it'll be at least two months doing something. Right on. And I have to check the valves again. I got them all, I checked them 4,000, 5,000 miles ago, and I want to know if they're exactly the same or if they've loosened or if they tightened. Alrighty. Because I have an idea that the valves loosen as the miles go on because they're all the valves are a thou, at least a thou too loose. And like they're supposed to be 14 to 16 and mine are 17, 16, 17, almost up to 18. And they're supposed to be uh, 14 to 16, I think. And I got some that are 16 and 17. So I'm wondering if they wore. What does that have, like shims in it, like the Jaguar uh, yeah, does? Yeah, okay. shims. But um, so you I'm have just to... wondering if they wore to be loose or did some previous mechanic adjust them to be loose and then they tighten as they wear. But see, if they loosen... What, Usually what, when something wears, it's looser. See, the problem, the book says exactly where these valves are supposed to be adjusted at. And if you run them out of that adjustment, you ruin your cam because it puts the valve or to sink to the curve of the cam and it'll wear the cam it'll kind of make a little line across it it'll put like the high on the cam won't be where the valve's supposed to be it'll be off a little tiny bit and that'll 
that'll start doing damage to the cam. It'll wear it in the in the spot where it's not supposed to have wear. Right on. If you run valves out of adjustment, but they're they appear to, like it runs all right, but you can hear the valves a little tiny bit, like. Yeah. But they're supposed to be a little bit tighter, but um, that was every valve. Like I can show you my paperwork, and every valve is a thou looser than it's supposed to be. So I ran it that way. But I'm wondering that if it wore like that way, or if did someone adjust them that way, and they tighten up as they wear? Because usually valves tighten up as they wear. Uh, it depends on where they wear. If they wear on the cam, or if they wear on the seat. Know what I mean? It gets. It's a little complicated. See, the proper mix is they wear on the, like the old. Uh, rocker arm motors like uh, push rods there's enough wear there on that side of the valve and then you've got the seat and the unleaded and the unleaded gas that we burn on these older engines say from the 60s that require a lead cushion on your valve to help the seats and help the valves and without this lead buildup the valves beat into the seat and prematurely wear out the seat and the valves, which that wear and the valve wear over on the push rod and the rocker arms equals out so your valves stay perfectly in adjustment. But nowadays, without the lead gas, the valve probably wears faster on this side than it does on the rocker side. Know what I mean? And supposedly we had better oil, but that this is only a problem if you drive lots of miles. But yeah. But anyway, um. So if I can tell, I spend all my time alone. Can you? <laughs> I just talk, talk, talk. And I've been trying to tell myself when you show up, I'm not going to talk my head off. <laughs> and here I am, just I can't even stop. You're I can't even stop talking long enough to breathe. You're allowed. <laughs> Well, you have to breathe when you're talking because it's just automatic. <laughs> well, I can talk breathing in and I can talk breathing out, I guess. <laughs> so, when, so when I get sand, are you ready for sand anytime? Uh, anytime. I'm yes. going to ask, well, I'll just ask Harold if he can load. I'll get a U-Haul trailer and I'll get him to put, give me a bucket load of sand. I'm sure he will. Just There's sand there. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it all. Oh, you want me to play with that, do you? Yeah, you can have that. No, I don't want to play with that. I'll end up <laughs> yeah. playing with that and breaking bubbles. <laughs> but I'll bring you over some sand for that, and then we'll have to shovel. Does that matter? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I got a tarp. We'll just shovel it right out there. And then I'll drag my cement mixer over. And... Mm. Right on. So, you're gonna just, you're, so you don't want to dump it in there. You're not dumping sand uh, in there. You're no, going to mix cement up. I'm mixing cement with it. Oh, um, okay. I'm going to use up all this, but I also had to buy... Do you have uh, any young person you know that would help you mix cement and dump mm, it for you? No. 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 <laughs> There's no young people around uh, there? No, but what I was planning on doing is the sand is healthy outdoors. It won't hurt it, <laughs> whether it's covered or not. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Leaves... If I get too many leaves in it, the leaves will kind of, wouldn't be best in the cement. Like I'll have to cover it up to get, keep leaves out, especially if they start falling off quick. But um, okay, here's my idea is the sand, the cement, I mix, peacefully mix up and dump it in the wheelbarrow, come in, try to make it back there and dump it and kind of half smooth it out and then do, do that until and smooth it out until oh that's enough for today wash out the cement mixer and then i go in there as that's starting as uh say an hour or so goes by it starts setting up and i just take my trial and make an edge like where the cement's there yeah. just square it off level yeah square it off to the old stuff there that's where i start tomorrow Oh, I see what you're saying. And just, that's a seam. You'll do a little it bit of Like here, look at this. Yeah. I did this and I didn't do this. And there's the only thing that happened, you know, a little tiny crack. Well, there's nothing that, um, this is not like the floor in your new shop. That looked like uh, a mare. Didn't it? Like you can see yourself. Like if you had a speck of dirt in your eye, you could say, ah, oh, there, you can get it out. Like just the We're going to set up floor. a ping pong what arena. A beautiful floor though. But this, this is just, you know, like a piece of crap. So uh, I'm just going to throw cement on it. And when I get tired, 
Um, I'll just stop and I'll just square off the edge because um, after an hour or two the cement will kind of set up and I can just kind of uh, work the edge so it's straight up and down. Yeah. Like that's what I did. That'll just give you seam so it don't that's crack. That's what I did right here. Yeah. Because here I did this one day and then I start the next day and I went here and like that's okay. It's only just for the convenience because when you're working on a car in there with a jack and jack stands, it's a real drag having that hole in the middle. Well, I imagine. Because that's right where you want to put the jack or the jack stand. And, you know, it, it's, and I'd like, like, it's. It'd look better. Yeah, yeah. You could work on it better. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't drop your car in it if you were trying to back it yeah. up and you turn well, your wheel. Well, that day I put those plywood things down. That was kind of foolish. Though That plywood did not do anything. Like, we did not need Other that. Other than booby trap us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway. <clears throat> good, Doc. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of miss driving that, but it's kind of good because... Winter's coming, man. Now... I've been focusing, as I said, I, I fixed the corner of my barn over there where that wall was all broken out. Yeah. I ran into it with the oast bill, fixed that. <laughs> and then another bag I took over to Mum's and I fixed, she had a crack in her foundation in the corner that was opening up. So yeah. I Fix put, it. mixed Fix up the whole bag and put in it and smoothed it up and that turned out good. So it's kind of good that the car's off the road because now I'm uh, like, I am getting ready to pressure wash the floor and clean and move things around and do something else other than just jumping in the car and going for a drive. Because if the car was still driving, nothing, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be driving. Gotcha. I'd be driving until it was uh, cold and miserable and then I'd be doing my cement work when it freezes at night, you know. So it's kind of good that the thing stopped driving because now I can do some other things that I have to do. Perfect. I'll it doesn't like make life more interesting. Uh, it's harder work enjoying yourself, doing stuff you have to do rather than the stuff you want to do. Like <laughs> the stuff you want to do is always funner. But, but anyway, well, it makes you happier, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that'll make you happy getting the cement. Now. Yeah. Once that's oh, done, that'll yes. make you happy. And I plan on on the north on that wall one spot the mice ripped uh, eight holes through the vapor barrier and they got all the insulation pulled out well i'll push the insulation back in and i'm going to cement when i put the bit. cement down i'll push it up in and kind of curl it right to the wall so they have to dig through cement to get back out uh, like if they want to like i don't suspect they're in there after i bang on the wall a couple times Oh, but, they don't care. They just hide out. Yeah, they probably find. They probably have other spots to. Hit. Oh, I'm sure. They can go in and out. But anyway, I want to seal that up because the mice. Um, that's that's the same. That's the house that the mice got into the Ferrari and ate the speaker cover off. Oh, wouldn't I beat him? Yeah. Anyway, I got a whole box of mothballs hidden all through the car. When you get in there, oh, it smells awful. But I got squirrels and chipmunks and mice. In do, here. do you know? Do you know that joke? Do you ever smell mothballs? No, I don't know that joke. Well, how'd you get the legs apart? <laughs> I'll laugh later when I figure it out. <laughs> Moth. <laughs> I'll laugh later. When you ask someone, do you ever smell mothballs? Well, if they say no or say yes, I've smelled mothballs okay, before. I heard you say, you the first How, "How'd you get your legs apart?" <laughs> right? There's a good one for you, people. It, it, I didn't say it. <laughs> but you've smelled mothballs before. No, no well, he said no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So then you ask him, "How'd you get your legs apart?" Uh, this thing it, it kind of looks like um, a cartoon character, doesn't it? Well. Looks like a mirror, two little a mirror eyes of there. some sort. I've got some metal for that, for that to be like that. Look, okay. my baby, my anyway, shirt's so brand new, I still got my tag on. I got one. I need one just like it. Right on. I really like your car, Jimbo. Goodbye. I like it. It's cool. The wheels yep. are worth what you paid for, probably. I know, yes. It, you know. Well, the tires are well. They're 36. 36 so people, inch rim yeah. and 5 inch tire. 36 that's, by 5. That's the original Dunk. 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 <laughs> yeah. You ever tell the Dunk? The car of the big wheels. Okay. You get the big tire like they usually do the Impala 73, 4, 5 Impala. You got the great big. That's the original Dunk. And people already think they've already done it, right? It's already yeah. been done. 36 yeah, inch it's wheels. It's kind of like um, a band will come out with this uh, 
song that, of course, they've got it from somebody else years ago. And uh, it'll be kind of like a hit and everybody yeah. likes it. But if you uh, title it and research it on Google or Facebook, uh, it sends you back to the 50s where the original person wrote it. Yeah. And it's been copyrighted and rewrote or resung by 40 different artists. Yeah. Each one puts their own little twist in it. Right on. But anyway, um, everything's going good then. Well, I'd rather be enjoying myself and driving that, but this is like it's kind of good because now I um I I'm doing. You got what a plan. I, I got a plan. I ha I have. To, I want to get the cement done, and well, I want to start working on. You're ready. Yep. Yeah. I found them. They were all over my junk pile over there, everywhere. Everywhere. Um, not together either. But anyway, there they are. Awesome. So I'll see if I can get you the sand in the next. Oh. And I'll see if I can get you some sand. That's what I'll do. See what happens. See. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can. I think we got some earth there we can get rid of. I know when you're getting it, all that matters is when when you put your hand in it, say it's damp. You put your hand in it as uh, long as it doesn't turn brown. If your hand turns brown, it means it has soil in it. And oh, okay. Soil. Like I gotta say, no it's all brown. For, soil is no good for cement. Uh, sand, washed gravel or sand has no. So, uh, to be cement gravel or sand, it has to be kind of clean. It can't have topsoil in it. Okay, we'll see. If, it, if your hand, and the, sim the simple way is you just put your hand in, rub it around, and if your hand turns brown or real brown like it would in dirt, like topsoil, it means it's too dirty. Okay. The sand has to, like, uh, wherever there's sand, you put your hand in, it's sand. There's no dirt in it. It, like sand I juice. don't know if I got any sand for you then I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I have to check and see if it's dirty or not yeah like it I'll have to like check. if there's too much topsoil in the sand it makes for poor quality cement it'll have a brown film on top and the cement will be soft it won't it won't harden properly okay sand and topsoil don't go together well there's a sand or no cement and topsoil don't go don't mix together. they don't mix yeah gotcha like when you mix up a batch in your cement mixer and say your your gravel has a little bit of topsoil in it yeah. when and gets your hand a little bit dirty you see a little bit of a brown film like mud floating on top of the water we'll see if and it, a little if bit is okay but it if is. it's a lot of dirt uh, or a lot of mud it, it's it, it'll make a crumbly poor quality cement yeah but but you just stick your hand in if you're in the sand if your hand hands relatively clean after it's sand but if it's dirty like working in the garden mm. uh it's too too dirty we'll see what happens then i'm not like sure you're then. getting sand or you have sand well see they dug some earth around where the building is because it's well they need to get some earth away from the yeah. building because you know the water and runs it, towards the building. sand there well most of our, i think most of the property there and the next door neighbors is sand oh okay if you know what i'm trying to say yep. the next door neighbor has sand i can go over and get a bucket of sand for him no doubt in my mind oh. i never even thought about going over and his just pay for it put some sand in a like in a u-haul like trailer sand over. actually is relatively cheap yeah oh yeah it's the trucking yeah and people is what and the establishment is what makes the money you know, yeah like sand itself is quite cheap yeah you know, um it's worth actually nothing, but it's the <laughs> truck that brings it to you. <laughs> we got you. We got you. But anyway, <clears throat> but if your hand gets dirty when you handle it, it means it might have too much topsoil on it. Okay. We'll go from there. That's all we can do, baby. We'll go from there and see what can happen. Alrighty, you gonna you gonna, you gonna play on that car at all, are you, or are you just gonna leave it set for a while until um, you look at it? And well, here and there, eh? Um, and I'm gonna fix, like I'm gonna spend a day or two build that headlight thing. Yeah. And sounds like fun. And uh, as soon as I get organized to do the spent floor, that's I'm what you're going that, for. But um, what are you doing ready for this weekend? Getting anything ready for this weekend? Uh, no. Don't no. care. Uh, no. Got a big I, storm coming. Oh, yes. I don't know if there's anything I can get ready for. Oh. Good. I don't have... Um, We're going to get some extra grub, aren't we? See if our generator works. You got a generator? Yeah. Does it work? 
nope, it needs to be cleaned. <laughs> Carburetor needs. Mum's got a generator. Maybe I I should make sure that runs. But I don't know. We're not really supposed to get the worst of it here, are we? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Oh, we are. Oh, from what I understand. Oh, it's coming this way then. It's it's coming to meet us. Come to see oh, us. Oh, because it's not. It was going towards Newfoundland there for a while. Well, I don't hope it on anybody, but yeah, I hope it doesn't come here. Yeah, did you get your wall fixed? Well, I... Well, it's good, Jimbo. You got her all cleaned up, buddy. It looks real good. Um, I I don't actually do it for that reason. Now, when Mump comes, oh, your lawn looks good all mode. I personally like it messy. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's kind of like my kitchen, kitchen table. Uh, I've cleaned it off maybe three times in 19 years. <laughs> and by nightfall, it, uh, you never know it. <laughs> I go away, come back, and it's Paul right to the ceiling. Again. Um, so I don't, I don't bother uh, cleaning. I walk around and don't even notice it. Hey, I'm going to use your washroom. Oh, okay. And that, by that, I mean this tree. All right, everybody, we're going to let you go. We're at Jimbo's. Jimbo's got a new Studebaker. I'm going to use his washroom, that tree right there. And uh, watch out for the cat. He won't call that thing, will he? Watch him for the cat. <laughs> See you later, everybody. Yep.